All right, moment of truth. Is my generator actually fixed? Let's go ahead and prime it. it sounds like it's primed. Make sure, make sure. Yeah, it's primed. It's ready. Here we go. That's a good feeling, guys. I like that. Good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I could not test my generator where I was parked there in Yuma because once again, I was under a quarter tank of gas. Did not plan the trip. I forgot that I wanted to test the generator, but it works. It works great. Thank you, RV Prepper Wayne, for fixing my brand new Onan generator once again. We'll see how long it lasts. I am traveling with my Honda 2200i inverter generator as a backup as well. But yeah, guys, we're on the road, eastbound and down, testing out the brand new microphone. I've got a new Sony integrated shotgun microphone. It's tiny on the top of the camera. It's directional. It has the windscreen, the wind muff for uh, going into windy locations and uh, hopefully audio is better finally. Thanks for joining me on the channel today, guys. I will be uploading this video with some connected internet. Check out the video description below for more details on high-speed unlimited internet anywhere. Here we go. But I mean, I just was barely over a quarter tank of gas when I tested it this morning with the generator. We do need to get gas here in Gila Bend first, uh, 379 a gallon. I'm also here to Love's where most of the time you can get propane here. One of the cool things about Love's compared to like Flying J or Pilot is that if they pump propane, they pump propane and they advertise 24 hours a day. So if you see a tank, which at this particular store, there is no white propane tank to fill up my propane, but if you see one, Loves will fill it up 24 hours a day. Um, I'm actually running the fridge on electric right now, pulling 370 watts because I am out of propane. But while we're here in Gila Bend, there's a really cool restaurant I wanna go try here for lunch, and then we'll look for propane, and then we'll head towards Tucson. <laughs> um. Wells Fargo Bank just flagged me uh, for suspicious activity on my card. Not initially, um, it worked here. It let me pump $150 worth of gas. That's the limit here. And then it shut it off. Well, I didn't have a full tank. So I swiped my card again. It said declined. As I'm going to, to grab my wallet, my phone started ringing again, just like it did in Vegas. And it was Wells Fargo Bank an actual person asking me if I was trying to use my card at the gas station. I said, Yes, I used it the first time. I'm trying to fill up my tank and it got suspicious. He's like, okay, I've reactivated it for you. And then I was able to put another $9 in. <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't, each bank is, is different in their own ways. I, Man, I cannot believe how many problems I had with Bank of America originally. At least now with Wells Fargo, when they suspect or detect possible fraud, which I have no idea why swiping my card twice at a gas pump initially targets that it's happened before but at least they fixed it reinstated it and now we can go spend my money at a restaurant here in Gila Bend a really cool looking one I hope it's open all right we're here they're open it's a little warm today it's going to be 84 degrees so for the kitties for the next 30 or 40 minutes we'll crank on the AC here there we go the compressor will kick on in just a minute right now we're pulling 276 watts because the fridge has shut off for now, oh, there we go, 1,000 watts, 1,100 watts, and uh, not taking any uh, solar just yet because battery is still at 100%. By the time we come back, we'll check on this and we'll see how things are going. Opie, you take care of your baby little sister, Tara, okay? Okay, got the AC on for you. Okay, buddy. Eventually here at some point, I am going to have to drill some holes into that compartment and put some uh, fans in there like I did before because it will get too hot, but just for 30 or 40 minutes, we'll be fine. This is the place though, Space Age Lodge, with a big UFO on the roof here. Restaurant, another sign up there says Space Age Lodge. Let's go check it out. Oh, this place is great. Look at this, it's almost like Star Trek themed. Lots of space themes. 
and your occasional green alien. Yeah. Oh, three more up there. No magnets here. They do have space age coffee cups, which are cool, but I'm going to put in an order. Sit here at the bar. Peace, dude. Yeah, I'm the only one here. A couple other creations above the bar there, too. That guy looks cool. That guy looks creepy. Something from like uh, Spaceballs when the dancing aliens on the table. All right, don't know why I'm the only person in here. I hear voices back there, but I got me my alien burger here. Bacon cheeseburger and french fries with some decorations back there, but okay, let's try this out. Here comes some more people. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. Don't do it, Eric. Mm. That's good. That was a really good burger. I feel like I haven't had a burger in at least a day. <laughs> I eat a lot of burgers. I eat more burgers than pizza, huh? Okay. Well, we gotta head over towards Tucson here. The kitties are gonna be mad that I didn't bring them any bacon, but let's go see if it's nice and cool in here. Oh, yeah. Opie, you big ham, you haven't even moved. <laughs> oh, yeah, we froze the kitties out. It's 66 degrees in here. Let's check our panel here. Okay, we're at 99%, bringing in almost 1,700 watts of solar and pulling 1,300 for the air conditioner. Literally unlimited. And it's, we just started spring. This is so nice. Oh wait, let me check the temperature in that bay real quick. 101 degrees. At 120 or 122, it shuts off the inverter. So that will be my next step, is to find grates and fans and cut holes and get some, in, some moving air inside that compartment. But for little stops like this, this worked perfectly. Now I can turn the air conditioner off, turn the cab AC back on as we drive and finish our way towards Tucson. Hold on a minute. All right, I got nothing but time. I am not gonna miss this. Let's go check this out over here. Watch out for rattlesnakes, Eric. Watch out for rattlesnakes. Looks like this property is for sale. Let's go take a look at it here. Um, strange. Not Slab City, but there are four of these triangular concrete See them? I'm on one now. And there's a center. They all meet up with this little plaque right here. What does this say? Corps of Engineers. Uh, survey Mark. Okay. Did I mention we're just outside of Casa Grande? Hey, I know what that means. That means house big. Big house. Casa Grande. See, my Spanish is getting better. Y'all ever heard of the Corona Satellite Calibration Target Area here? Yeah, so back in the 1960s, what, 60s? So this is the location of a Soviet spy picture satellite. <laughs> so you could stand right there and be photographed from space in the 1960s. It was a program designed by the United States to peer into the Soviet Union, China, and any other enemy or ally that might come under suspicion. And this is what is left of it. Uh, nowadays, uh, 74 years later, uh, we have GPS satellites that take pictures of everything. So, uh, well, I'm sure I haven't seen it yet, but I'll pop a picture up on Google Earth what this looks like right now. Interesting little thing out here in the desert. Speaking of the desert, I'm very anxious to get out of the southern desert. I feel like I've been here for too long and I'm ready for a scenery change. Some green grass, some tall trees and stuff like that. But today we got to get to Tucson. All right, just topped off propane here at Flying J. Full tank of propane now. Got the fridge back running on propane. Also got two for five on the Gatorade Zero Sugars. Heck yeah, let's go to Tucson. Well, Look, it's been a weird day. It's been a weird day by far. I have to prop that open with the plunger. Got too hot with the air conditioner. Uh, I'm parked here next to a, a train going by and Interstate 10 on the other side. I had to come back here and figure something out because as I was driving up to my reserved harvest host, which is a half mile walk this way, uh, as I was driving up, I got a text message popped up and said, your reservation 
with Button Brew House Harvest Host has been canceled. Again, I was driving the RV up to the place. I pulled out in front, went inside, said, what's up, you guys just canceled my reservation as I'm pulling in. Said, oh, five minutes ago, the landlord said we are no longer allowed to be a harvest host and we had to cancel all future reservations. And I said, really? Five minutes before I showed up? Yeah. So now there's the sign for Button Brew House. You can walk or drive your car around there and it's this building on the way other side over there. I just, it's gonna be a loud night. It's gonna be a really loud night. So anyway, they are no longer a harvest host as of the time I just pulled in here. <laughs> hilarious. I mean, literally hilarious. But, uh, however, where I'm parked, so we got a dump truck here. The train's now gone. Now there's where I'm parked on the side of the road in the gravel. Uh, can't put the slide out, or I don't want to put the slide out because I'm going to be doing some stealth camping tonight here in the RV. I am going to take you over to the brew house and we're going to look at it together and get some of their craft brews and check it out. But uh, what this means is now, since I'm parked here, I could probably stay here two nights, which means I can explore more of Tucson now because I'm not going to get kicked out of the brewery first thing in the morning. So I think I'll unload the motorcycle tomorrow. And as part of my next video, we'll continue to explore some other new quirky stuff here in Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, you don't like it? Leave me a comment below. Tucson, Tucson. Just really weird, it's a, it's a weird day. In the meantime, I'm gonna hang out with my kitties. Well, Tara hasn't come out yet. I just wanna make sure that it cools down in here and that the, the temperature inside that compartment continues to drop down before I leave to make sure, because it is warm out. This is the warmest day of the year for me here in Tucson. Um, and actually, I have decided that I'm not going to abuse this spot. Since I'm already parked here, I'm going to stay here tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, Kevin just told me that Desert Diamond Casino here in Tucson allows for one night if you register with the casino. So I'll do that tomorrow, which means I'm going to purchase some tickets for tomorrow. But that's not part of this video. I'm going to go check out the uh, brew house first. Oh, but hey, I'm not putting the slide out. So the slide is going to stay in today which means the air conditioner should cool a little better, should be a little more efficient because we're not cooling as big a space, but it's perfectly fine. We've got the TV there, so we're good to go. Yeah, I'm at least gonna go get one beer here at Button Brew House, even though they're no longer a harvest host anymore. I'll be the last one. All right, here is the door and here's the brand new sign. We apologize, our landlord does not permit RV vehicles to park in the parking lot. Brand new sign. All right, we're in the tap room. I think they do flights here. I think they do. Right next to me is a window. There's their fermentators. Beer. It smells good in here. All right. They do have flights here. And the, the wood is made out of the state of Arizona. These are all their local beers. I tried uh, a couple lagers, a couple ales, and two IPAs. A little everything. And I think the Tucson Traveler is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Hey. They're good people in there. That's a really good tap room. That's a good local Arizona bar. They've been here for over six years and everything just came crushing down on them this afternoon. And I feel bad. I feel bad that I may be the last Harvest Host member ever because, because of the landlords that own this place. But my favorite out of the uh, six was the Tucson Traveler. So I got a uh, four pack, four pack of them. I feel weird being away from the kitties. It's not because I'm away from the kitties, it's because I'm half a mile away from the kitties. And that's what bothers me most. They're doing trivia tonight at 7 p.m. And they got a food truck out there. So uh, it's a cool place. Um, I'm sorry if I was grumpy earlier. It, you know, I'm just reacting live to the things going on. And uh, so are they, so are they. But uh, they've, They've hired an attorney and they gotta go talk with a lawyer next week about what the landlord's doing to them. So it kind of sucks that it's, now they have to take legal action against them. But anyways, get back to the RV, check on the kitties, make sure that AC's still working. <sighs> Terror Bear, we need to work on being stealth. That does not help me be stealth. I've closed the curtain and turned the air conditioning on for you and you're still baking in the window. <sighs> But that's exactly why I always put these decals on all my RVs. This RV is climate controlled 24 seven. 
so nobody smashes a window. <laughs> what are you doing? What a putz with the butts. Got the AC still cranking in here. Let's check temperature of that compartment with it cracked open real quick. 97 degrees. It's come down and maintained because I've been in there at least a half an hour. So, all right. I'm going to grab one of these and then put the rest in the fridge. They didn't have any cat treats, Opie. Tell Tara not to lay up there. I don't like it when she lays up there. We're trying to be stealth. I need you guys to work with me, okay? Okay? <laughs> Goodness. I'm not mad at you, Tara, but come on. Come on, girlfriend. You got, you got to work with me here, okay? <laughs> Jeez, guys. <sighs> it's 420. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're down to 91% now. Only bringing in 440 watts on the solar and still 1,300 watts of the AC. So you can see how now that we're not in summer, we're not getting unlimited sun, right? And uh, now the sun has definitely gone down. I will have to fire up the generator if I want to keep using this, probably. Probably. Do we need to, Opie? Do you think we should keep running the AC for the kitty kitties? Okay, there's another train going by out there. Yep, another train. The heck the generator won't start I've been trying inside it's primed I'm trying to but <laughs> I've been trying for like five minutes the generator will not run and I've got three quarter tank of gas this time that doesn't sound good that doesn't sound good at all. I don't know what's going on. Hang on. Oh, we got a code. Got a code. Let's read it. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Code 36. <laughs> you piece of junk. Pull out my Honda. Man, I love Hondas. Man. conditioner off I'm just charging the battery right now at 94% so I'm not gonna run the Honda much longer but uh, every day with that owning generator over there like guys I've been I've been battling this for over a decade and I'm, I'm still trying to keep a positive attitude although I don't understand why owning Onin as a company is still in business I don't know how they're still getting business this Honda runs perfect runs just works so great it's so quiet so reliable so simple and stupid it just works <laughs> anyways got my tickets for tomorrow so we'll, my next video will be a really fun one from Tucson Arizona Tucson Arizona and uh, in the meantime I'm still traveling towards Texas planning to see mom for Easter this year and I uh, got about 700 miles till I hit the start of Texas and I've got to get to the other side of Texas. 
and work on getting the RV registered still. Ah, oh, man. Life on the road. I never said it was easy. I never said it was cheap. And obviously, don't do what I do, blah, blah, blah. Because it's a constant adventure, guys. Constant adventure. I still like it most of the time. <laughs> but... Let me charge up all my batteries here and get ready for my next video, get this edited here tonight, and then I will see you in a few days. You guys be well. Bye-bye.